So my name is Lauren Smith Kennedy. I am the Director of Development and Fundraising as well as Communications. Right now we are standing at 57 Christian Hill Road, which is the future home of Soccer River Wildlife Center. Currently we are over at um, 238 River Road in our founder's basement and we have outgrown it. So the space that we're standing in right now is hopefully in a year's time we will be here and it will be completely done. This building has a lot of wonderful history behind it. It was built in 1781 by the Bragdon family, specifically William Bragdon, and he built this house and over the years it has pretty much stay the same with some, some differences in construction, but it has a really beautiful history for the town of Lymington. The Bragdon family was one of the first settlers within Lymington, and it feels really wonderful to be able to kind of preserve that history. This house itself used to be a wolf sanctuary, so prior to this there were wolves here. It's, I think it's really special that not only are we kind of keeping the integrity of the original house, but also what the house was prior to this. Yeah, you're just dusting off what it was originally, yeah, pretty much. Exactly. And you've got a partial wolf right there. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Soccer River Wildlife Center was founded in 2015 by Bethany Brown. She's our founder and director. I've been told you're the founder of Soccer River Wildlife. Is that true? I am. And what prompted you to found this center? Uh, well, I've always had a passion and a love for animals. And then we just started off small, I think about 50 animals a year. First year and then the next year was a little more. And then after that, it just doubled and tripled every single year. And I just never imagined it would take off as big as it did. Our mission is to um, we rehabilitate injured, ill, and orphan wildlife. We take any wildlife animal up to the size of a coyote. Um, we get in a lot of raccoons, but we also get anything from as small as a mouse, again, up to the size of a coyote and anything in between. So possums, raccoons, lots of squirrels. I have to say porcupines are my favorite species that we work with. I'd say more recently we had a porcupine who we got a call about who had a very bad case of mange. We were able to go out in Freeport, do a rescue, bring it to our center, and just about two months time we were able to completely heal the porcupine of mange and a serious case of it too crusting all around the face and it looked bad off. It was a great learning experience too. We were able to share with our audience that this porcupine who looked so sick could get better and be released back into the wild. The best thing you can do is if you find an injured, orphan, or sick animal is never touch it with bare hands. Never ever. Always, always use gloves, a towel, or something if you need to pick it up. Never give food or water and always make sure the animal is kept warm, especially with babies. If they get too cold, then they can obviously not make it. And you never want to feed an animal when it's cold because that could do horrible damage. So the best thing to do is Always wear gloves, always make sure you're protected and keep the animal warm, no food or water, and then call a rehabber as soon as possible. The patients that come in, they come in for various reasons. I'd say during the summer is when we get a majority of orphaned babies. So that's something happens to mom, mom runs away, any of those reasons, uh, maybe the babies are ill and left behind. So. Baby season is uh, definitely summer. We will also be getting in animals who are struck by cars. We have gotten in um, a bobcat here. During the winter is definitely our slow time. That's when we see the adult animals who are coming in after being hit by a car. So you must have your heart broken on a routine basis. Yes, I cry a lot. But I also, on the flip side, I have many, many happy moments, many amazing moments. Um, release days are some of the most magical times, but I'm torn because we've had the babies since they were like sometimes eyes closed newborns, and then we're seeing them going off into the world and we just don't know what's going to happen to them. We pray that, I mean, nature is nature, nature will happen, but we just pray that that they stay as safe as possible. We work very, very closely with the state biologists and the wildlife conflict agents, which is a fairly new program within the state, which we love. Um, they are a huge asset. We also work very, very closely with um, multiple towns, their animal control officers or their police departments. We are all volunteer run. We have about 100 volunteers who support our organization and support the wildlife that we take in. Our goal is to open it next year. And as soon as we open, we're gonna start taking patients in. So we'll definitely make sure we uh, have an announcement made. And hopefully within a few years, we might even be able to open up an education center here. We're hoping to get in there by June 2025. 
fingers crossed, of course, things can happen with construction and everything. So that is our, our projected date. We're actually not open to the public, meaning we are there to help out folks and take in animals, but because of their condition and everything, we do keep them in these rooms. We have injured and ill animals, so we focus on their care. Our website is SaccoRiverWildlifeCenter.org. You can also find us across platforms at Saco River Wildlife Center. So we are on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, basically all the social media platforms. Best of luck to you as you move forward with this very important mission of yours. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Today. Not a problem it. at all. I greatly appreciate your time. Take care. Thank you.